thanks for joining me today. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use a Google Sheet to collect attendance and to use it as a quick and easy access tool for communicating with parents in a school system. Now, I know that a lot of teachers in districts already have a gradebook system that they use online, but let's say, for instance, you're operating in a summer school session where you can't typically use your student information system for attendance or maybe you're a sponsor for a group or a club at school and you want to take attendance for meetings and have a quick way to log that and get in touch with parents or get in touch with students when they miss meetings. So what I've done here is I've already laid out a Google Sheet with some columns and some information the way I want it and I'm going to show you how to edit that and make a few changes to make your life a little bit easier. Now I've added a student name column and and some other information, a parent email address, or this could be a student email address if you want it to be. Uh, the grade, uh, you can put, tell what grade they're in. And then let's say for instance, if it's a club and they have to pay dues, then you can have a column where you can mark whether they paid dues or not. And then finally here, I've got a Monday through Friday column where we can um, mark if they've attended meetings. Now obviously you're probably not going to meet every day but this is just a kind of a scenario to show you how this might work. And let's say for instance I need to spread this out through an entire month so rather than retype all of these all over again I'm just going to highlight these five cells and then hit control C to copy that information. And then I'm just going to move out to the right and then highlight the next five and hit control V to paste. And then just do that over and over again so that I can have several columns ranging out for at least four weeks so that we can have that taken care of. And of course, this information is spread way too far out to the right for us, uh, at least for me. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to highlight these columns and put them in brackets, add some borders to that. And then I'm going to change the column width. So if you highlight, if you click, hold, and drag on a column all the way out and include all the columns that you want to include, then we can change the width of all of these columns at once. So I've highlighted all of these columns all the way out to column X. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click resize columns. And of course 100 is a little bit too much for me so I'm going to make it about 25 and it's going to narrow those columns down so we can see everything in one view and that makes it a little bit easier to see. And of course it's kind of scrunched my names here on, on the days so we might try that again. Make it 30. See if that fits. And you'll just have to play around until you get it the way you want it. See that's a little bit better. Now in order to check whether or not they were present or absent for the meeting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this cell and I'm going to choose validation. Now for validation what we're doing is we're going to choose a column. In this case, um, well, right now we're just doing it for one cell, but the, you can see that E2, the cell that I've chosen, is selected on the cell range. And I'm going to choose from a list of items and I'm going to enter P for present and then I'm going to use a comma to separate that from the A for absent and if you wanted to you could do T for tardy. And then I'm going to save that and what it does is it puts a checkbox in that cell so that each time we have a meeting I can mark whether they're present, absent, or tardy. Now I want that to be the same for all of these cells all the way across so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to copy that cell and I'm going to paste it to all these others. And of course, now you can see that that validation is set up for all of them. The other option I could have used is I could have clicked on validation and instead of making this just for E2, I could say it's for E2 and then a colon all the way through X28 in this case and hit save and now you can see it spread it all the way out to the last cell in the last column. So now I have a validation tool to mark whether they're present or absent. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another piece of information to this so that visually instead of just seeing P's 
or A's or T's, I can see a color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the format menu and choose conditional formatting. And of course I'm going to do the same range again. I'm going to go I'm going to do E2 to X28. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say text contains P and P is present, so I'm going to make it if it contains P, it's going to be green as it's already set here, or I could choose a color here, but this is the color I want, and I'll hit done. I'm going to add a new rule and say that if the text contains A, then it will be red. Let's make that a shade of red that's a little bit easier to work with, and hit done. And apparently I didn't put my range on there, so I'll have to go back and edit that to make sure it's correct. I'm going to highlight that range and copy that so I can just paste it into the next rule. And I'll hit done. You can see our A is now red. And then I'm going to add one more rule for that same range. And I'm going to say if the text contains T, then it will color it like a, a shade of yellow so I can see that it's a tardy, like a caution. And then I hit done. So now anytime I add a P, an A, or a T here, it automatically chooses the color that I've prescribed. So that makes it visually a lot easier for you to see. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some names and some emails and some other things in here um, so that we can see how that benefits us if we've got presences or absences or tardies in here. Okay, so I've added some names here, and I've added some email addresses, and I actually changed that to student email, and then I've given some grades, and so let's put some some presents and some absences here, and um, let's show how this might be beneficial. So let's say, for instance, I apply to this chart, I highlight all these columns, and I apply to this chart a filter. Now with filters turned on, what it allows me to do is, let's say for instance on Wednesday, I want to filter for all the students that were absent. And I want to send an email to all of those students notifying them that they've been marked absent from the meeting. Well, by sorting it by absence, I can see that these two were the only two absent. So I could highlight their email addresses, copy them, and then paste them into an email and send out a notification letting them know that they've been counted absent from that meeting. Now this is a huge time saver if you've ever had to type out individual emails to send to someone regarding absences or notifications for meetings or different things like that. The other thing is I can quickly just highlight this entire column of participants in my organization and highlight their addresses to send out a blanket email for the entire group. So it's just a huge time saver in terms of being able to communicate uh, when students miss meetings and things like that. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is the dues paid column. So let's say for instance this is for a club and we collect dues so that we can pay for different club activities and, and different purchases throughout the year. If I want to track whether or not students have paid their dues then I'm going to do it the same way I did the validation tool. So what I'm going to do here is highlight this column of cells and I'm going to go back to the data menu and click on validation and just like we did with the check mark list for present, absent, and tardy, I'm going to do a choose from a list of items. But here I want like a check mark or a blank box to show that they've either submitted their dues or not. So I'm going to use some symbols and to get those symbols I'm going to have to go out somewhere else. So what I'm going to do here is I've, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit by going to a Google Doc. I'm going to choose insert special characters and from here I've chosen the symbol and miscellaneous category and I'm going to use this ballot box and then I'm also going to search for like a check mark. So let me see if I can find a check mark. And there's one. That's the one I want. And then I'm going to highlight and copy the ballot box. Go back to my spreadsheet, enter that item. 
separated by a comma, go back, highlight my check mark, and then go back and then paste that in there. And so now I have a validation box for that column. So now if this student has paid her dues, I can hit the check mark or hit the drop down list and choose the check mark. If they have not, I can choose the ballot box saying that we're still waiting on them to turn in their dues. Well, hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, I know I found it useful for our summer school program and for uh, just different attendance things for clubs and organizations. And uh, thank you for joining us.